The Project NM, known only from a single blueprint, is possibly one of the strangest tracked war machines ever designed. German blueprint HSK 3485, dated 15th June 1943, named Project NM, shows a monstrous and ungainly vehicle consisting of three Tiger tanks joined together by I-beam girders. Built atop the I-beam frame sits a warehouse-like structure, concealing three 150mm cannon-armed turrets. The reasoning behind this design, its purpose and even which branch of the Wehrmacht it was for, remains a total mystery. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Stan, and today we'll be looking at something that not even we can explain. The Germans had plenty of good ideas. They also had plenty of bad ones, but this, this kind of beats them all. This is a single blueprint, uh, but from what you can see, it it's... It's, it's something. It, I, I am at a complete lack of words. If you want to help us find more of these things in the future, uh, please do consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. Thank you to all of those that donate. You do help keep us alive. If you like our content, please do consider subscribing and donating. It, it really helps. With that said, let's get back to the monstrosity. <laughs> The only known original document pertaining to this vehicle is a single blueprint at Bundesarchiv Freiburg, filled under Vaproof 6 technical drawings. Vaproof 6 was the central office for the design and development of tanks and armored vehicles under the Waffenamt, the German agency in charge of weapons. The blueprint shows a side, a top, and a front view of the vehicle, as well as details of the doors. The blueprint is only a rough draft, meaning that many components that would be present to make a functional vehicle actually work are not drawn in. Forming the base of the vehicle are not one, not two, but three modified Tiger holes, each with a U-shaped cutout in the area of the turret ring, which is implied to hold a gimbaling system that supports the vehicle's frame. The tanks are arranged in a tricycle configuration with a single tank at the front of the vehicle and two in the rear. Lengthwise, the distance between the pivot point of the forward tank hull and the pivot points of the rear tank hulls is 14 meters. It has been theorized that these Tiger hulls would be made out of mild steel or thinner gauge than the normal tank, as the NM would not likely be intended to take enemy fire and this alteration would save weight. Alternatively, the NM may have incorporated all the non-combat-worthy Tigers that were gutted and repurposed. Forming the backbone of the vehicle's frame are four longitudinal I-beams, connected by ten transverse I-beams. All of the transverse I-beams sit atop the longitudinal ones, apart from the one at the very rear, which is attached underneath. There are three main transverse I-beams that run the full width of the vehicle and are merely structural to the frame. Three shorter beams spanning one-third the vehicle's width each sit under each turret, on either side of the main structural member. The vehicle would measure about 21.6 meters in total length and 16 meters in total width. Extrapolating from other values on the blueprint, the height of the vehicle can be calculated to 5.15 meters. The bottom of the longitudinal I-beams would be 1.18 meters off the ground. The height of each of the I-beams was 500 millimeters, meaning the frame accounted for a full meter of height by itself. This would mean the top of the frame would sit 2.18 meters off the ground, However, the blueprint shows this to be 2.28 meters. Most of the numbers given on the blueprint are approximate values, leading to such inconsistencies. Not to mention the inconsistency of this thing with physical reality. Mounted on top of the vehicle's frame were three turrets, each housing a single 150mm cannon. The central turret was staggered slightly behind the two outer turrets, which were placed just ahead of the rear tank holes. All three of the turrets faced over the rear of the vehicle. 
Two 300mm tall I-beams are placed longitudinally under each turret. The ends of these beams are shown to be cut down into points, the reason for this being unknown. The turrets rest directly on these I-beams without any turret rings having been drawn. Should the design have advanced any further, this obviously would have needed to be changed. The turrets themselves measure 3.4 meters long and 2.8 meters wide, tapering toward the front. Each turret has minus 80 degrees of gun depression and plus 10 of gun elevation. The centers of the cannon barrels sit 3.4 meters off the ground. Just in front of the outboard turrets slung beneath the I-beams of the vehicle's frame are a pair of storerooms. It is likely these would have carried everything needed for the vehicle including ammunition and provisions for the tank and gun crews. Concealing the turrets is a simple warehouse-like building measuring 8.5 meters long by 15.35 meters wide and approximately 4 meters tall. The barrels of the cannons protrude past the rear wall of the warehouse and are accommodated by a set of doors each. Curiously, in the forward view of the blueprint, these doors are shown to open horizontally, while in the top right corner of the blueprint, an alternative arrangement is shown where they open vertically. The sets of doors for the center turret is slightly larger than the doors for the other two turrets, as the center turret is farther away, and thus needs more room around the door to afford its barrel the same degree of traverse and elevation. There are two schools of thought as to what the purpose of this vehicle was, assuming it had one. The first is that it was destined for use on the plains of the Eastern Front, but there are several problems with this theory. Firstly, a large warehouse slowly creeping across the field is, well, not very inconspicuous. Second, the NM would be unable to cross rivers either by fording due to its sheer size and ungainliness, nor by bridges due to its width. On the eastern front, it would be relegated to very situational defensive positions where it could be camouflaged in a position anticipating an enemy attack. The fact that the cannons face over the rear of the vehicle indicate that the ability to quickly retreat was a consideration. In a situation advantageous to the NM on the Eastern Front, such as overlooking a large open plain, its 150mm cannons would be able to far outrange the enemy. There would be nowhere for the vehicle to run though, once its disguise is lifted. On top of this, the nearly 22 meter long moving warehouse would be extremely vulnerable to Soviet artillery and ground attack aircraft. There's also the fact that the NM offers zero advantages in this situation over three separate SPGs armed with three separate 128mm cannons, such as the Yak Tiger then in development. The second possible use for the vehicle is also the much more likely one. Is anything likely about this vehicle? I don't know, but yeah. That of a mobile coastal defense installation. A warehouse perched on a cliff is not likely to draw any undue attention from enemy ships, and careful positioning would allow the NM to extricate itself before the enemy returned fire. The name and armament of the vehicle, in addition to its suspected use as a coastal defense installation, point to the NM being a Kriegsmarine project. The name of the project, NM, is unlike any project name used by the Heer, and is closer to the name scheme used by the Kriegsmarine. The size of the turrets and cannons in the Project NM blueprint, comparable to the length of the Tiger tank which they are carried by, puts the cannons as being in the range of large 150mm. German 15cm cannons are only normally 150mm, in actuality they have a bore diameter of 149.1mm. Both the Heer and the Kriegsmarine operated numerous types of 15cm cannons. Through careful consideration of their sizes and service dates, the possible armament of the NM can be narrowed down to four cannons. From the here, the 15cm K18 and 17cm K18, and for the Kriegsmarine, the 15cm TBTSK C36 and 15cm SK C28. All four of these cannon types were employed in some form as coastal defense guns. The Project NM blueprint shows the cannon barrels extending 5.1 meters past the front plate of their turrets and the turrets measuring 3.4 meters in length by themselves. This is a total combined length of 8.52 meters. 
The 15 centimeter torpedo boats Canone C-36 is the smallest of the four candidates, at just over 7 meters in overall length. This is the only one of the four cannons that would fit entirely inside the turret and allow the turret to be wholly enclosed. The size of the other three cannon types, 8200mm for the 15cm Canone 18, 8291mm for the 15cm Schiff's Canone C28, and 8529mm for the 17cm Canone 18, would necessitate the turrets to be open at the rear, which is common for naval turrets but is contradicted by the presence of an enormous gun mantlet, which likely armored naval turrets lack. Unfortunately, the Project NM blueprint does not show the rear of the turrets and the details of their construction cannot be ascertained. Operationally, the NM would be deployed to a Zewerteidigung, a sea defense zone, where an attack was expected or where the defense force needed strengthening. The vehicle would be reversed into position overlooking a swath of sea and camouflaged to best appear as a non-threatening structure. When an enemy vessel came within range, the doors of the warehouse would be swung open, allowing the vehicle's free turrets to take aim and fire. The NM would probably have time enough to fire a few salvos before the enemy vessel realized it was being engaged by a warehouse, and not by surface vessels or gun emplacements. When the vehicle starts to come under fire, the NM could simply drive forward to move itself out of danger. Unsurprisingly, attaching three Tiger chassis together with steel girders and putting three ship's cannons and the warehouse on top was not seen as a very practical idea. I wonder why. <laughs> and the NM did not advance any further, to the great disappointment of all the wearaboos on the planet. I can already hear the screams of Gaishin, please. 